it's Joe here from Joe's Country Junction, and I'm here today to tell you a little bit more about my Halloween quilt. Yahoo! Um, the quilt is finally coming to the quilting frame, and we're on the last leg of the journey to get it on its way to American Patchwork and Quilting. Um, it's snowy here in Iowa. Um, it's January, but here we are, and I'm making the Halloween quilt. But that's the way it goes if you are making quilts for publication. You're usually working 9 to 12 months in advance. And so here we are in January, almost February, um, getting ready to send a quilt out that will be published in a fall issue of American Patchwork and Quilting. So I'm going to turn my camera around, and I'm going to show you the quilt, and I am going to show you the quilting motif. You ready? Okay, here's the quilt out on the frame. Does anyone recognize a piece strip of fabric that you sent? I'll pan down the row that I'm at. Maybe you can recognize one of the fabrics that you sent me. Um, for those of you who don't follow my blog regularly, I ask my blog readers to send me a two and a half inch strip of fabric and um, to help me out because I had a Halloween quilt that was due to American Patchwork and Quilting, but with COVID here, it's hard to get to quilt shops and with it being off season, it's hard to make a scrappy Halloween quilt if you can't um, get to lots of quilt shops and if the fabric that you're looking for is not in season. So here we are panning along. Um, the quilting motif that I'm doing this on this today, um, it's called Pumpkins on the Vine. And it's really pretty super easy. Um, sadly, um, I'm using white thread, so you're not going to be able to see the best. But I still thought it was worth a shot giving you a chance to see the quilt and to see what I was using for a quilting motif. We'll go to the whiteboard, and I think there you'll be able to see the design and get um, an idea of what I'm doing here. But I'll show you here. You Here you can see I'm making a pumpkin, and you can see I'm making a loop. And you can hear, see I am incorporating some leaves into the design. So there's leaves in it, there's a loop, and there's the pumpkins. I think it's a great uh, motif to be using on any fall quilt that you have. It's really super easy. It's very forgiving. And I think pretty much anybody can do it if you just practice first. And we'll be off to the whiteboard now and we'll practice the design. Here we go. After a lot of running around, I'm finally at the dry erase board. Um, it, you would not believe how hard it is to do these videos. I've had to shut off lights. I've had to cover windows um, because I was getting such glare on my whiteboard that I knew you wouldn't be able to see what I was doing. So um, I, it took me probably about five minutes just to figure out how to get the right combination of lights on, windows up, windows up, down in order to get this good of um, picture onto the whiteboard. So I'm here and let's get going. So it's made up of three things. There's a loop like that um, and it's made up of leaves and for leaves I just do uh, out and point down and then for these I'm making a little line like that inside them and then I'm doing another leaf like that. So that's not too hard. Sometimes I'm clustering up just putting one one uh, leaf on the vine. Sometimes I'm putting two, sometimes I'm putting three. Um, I'm just trying to make it as natural and normal as, as you would see it in a garden. And so then the other thing I'm doing is making a pumpkin. So I'm coming up like this. I'm reversing directions and going around like this. Um, then I put the top on the pumpkin. And then I come down and I track over onto that same line and come up. And then I go off from there. Does that make sense? So I'll show you one more time. The pumpkin's probably the hardest thing of the whole design to do. So you come out like this, you're going to reverse directions and go down around like this, put the top on the pumpkin, come down one side, track on that same line if you can, and then up. And so that's what the simple design that's going to make a pumpkin. So now we need to put all of the designs together. We need to put the loop the leaves and the pumpkin all together. So here we go. We're coming along. We're going to make a pumpkin. We're going to loop a, a couple loops around. Come down here. Maybe make a leaf. Maybe make two leaves. Oh, maybe make three leaves. And loop. Come around. Make a pumpkin. loop around, make a leaf, loop 
go round, come down, make a pumpkin. Um, when I've been working on my quilts, I've been trying to not make all of my pumpkins the same direction. So you can see these are all, um, the, the vine is all going up. I've been trying to make some that are on the side like this. And I've been trying to make some that are even upside down. Trying to make it look the most like a pumpkin patch that I can. Because pumpkins aren't all uh, laying perfectly when you see them out in the garden. So that's kind of the general idea. So there's the pumpkin, there's the loop, and there's the leaves. And so I'll just erase that all again and do it one more time for you. And... Maybe not talk quite so much through it so you can just watch. Okay, so here we go. Oops, I kind of got my direction screwed up there. But that's okay. I think that shows you typically what happens and you just have to be able to get yourself out of that situation. Um, I've told you before that if you have a good quilting motif, you have things that allow you to get out of tight spaces. And so here, um, when in doubt, put in a loop. Um, you can always fill in a leaf if it looks like that you need more balance in your design. So um, the loops and the leaves are definitely your friend. And I've been trying to keep it kind of proportionate as you see. I've been leaving the leaves that big. I've been leaving the pumpkins that big. Um, it's just kind of a fun um, autumn design that you could use for any kind of fall quilts. Um, it wouldn't have to. It could be Halloween. It could be fall. It could be just something that's maybe... Oh, fall colors, and you might just want to put a design like this on there. It's really kind of easy once you get the hang of it. You can see that it wasn't too hard here. And if you take some paper and you take a pen and you scratch it out on some paper, I think that you'll find that you are able to do it too. And so now let's head off to the machine, and I'll let you watch me at the machine. Again, I'm going to warn you that um, I'm using white thread and the background's white, so I don't know how much you're going to be able to see, but I think you'll get the feel of the movement of the machine and that will kind of give you a uh, idea of how it works when we're actually putting it onto a quilt. So off to the machine we go. Here we go. <laughs>
Rosie and I are here and we are showing off our finished quilt. You can probably see the pumpkin. Um, <laughs> Rosie holds it down. You can see the pumpkin on the vine motif here in the white spaces. You can probably see it pretty good. Um, and we're so happy that the quilt is finished. I'm off to bind it and then it's going to go into the mail, hopefully in tomorrow's mail. And the next time you'll see this quilt will be in American Patchwork and Quilting. It will be in a fall 2021 issue. And um, I hope you all enjoy it. I can't thank you all enough for sending me a piece of um, a two and a half inch strip of fabric um, so that I could include it in the quilt. That was so fun for me. And um, I appreciate all your support through it all. And that's all. I'm so excited to have it done. Say bye, Rosie. Bye. <laughs> See you later.